Hello and welcome to The Big Story. I'm Vivek Law. On to our first big exclusive story of the morning. Prime Minister Manmohan Singh is putting in a place a plan to bring in FDI and multi-brand retail. Now, Bloomberg UTV learns the government is in talks with the top five world's biggest retailers and has a blueprint ready in place to move on. Kumar Deep is here with more details on that. Uh, Kumar, uh, what are we learning? Well, what we understand from speaking to our sources uh, close to the Prime Minister after he has taken over as the Finance Minister of the country is the fact uh, that there are that the government has initiated and started the dialogue as far as uh, talking to big time retailers or big ticket retailers is concerned. It has it, it is in word uh, or it is in uh, constant uh, consultation with at least five big retailers. You name it, they could be uh, Walmart, Tesco's, Carrefour of the world, and initiate a process so that the moment government brings in the enabling notification, which would be slightly uh, changed from the first time this kind of a notification had come, uh, wherein it will enable the states which do want to have FDI in detail to come out and uh, put put uh, and 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 uh, allow these big time retailers to start shops. Uh, these four or five retailers, at least five of these retailers, would be in a position to set shop. Now we also understand that chief ministers of at least some of the Congress rule states like Delhi, Maharashtra have also appealed to the Prime Minister, asking uh, or uh, appealing that FDI in multi brand retail should be allowed. Also, the government's understanding is uh, that even uh, the, the opposition or the BJP ruled uh, Gujarat would be in a position to start or, or will allow FDI in multi-brand retail. So with four or five states willing uh, to uh, allow retailers, big time retailers to set shop, the government has initiated the process and FDI in multi-brand retail could be notified soon, but with the understanding that four or five big time retailers will set shop immediately after the enabling notification or the policy announcement is made. All right, Kumar, let's move on to the other big story that we have. Now, there could be relief uh, for telecom giant Vodafone in its tax tussle. Bloomberg UTV learns that the government could look for a middle ground on the matter and not ask Vodafone to pay a penalty. Kumar has been tracking that story as well. Uh, Kumar, what are we picking up as far as that story is concerned? Because a lot of back-channel discussions going on, uh, both uh, with the planning com uh, deputy pl uh, chairman of the planning commission, Monte Kaluvalia, and C. Rangarajan as well, having met top Vodafone officials over the last week. Uh, what's really brewing out there? Well, again, uh, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, uh, the key reformist uh, face of the government uh, at work here, given the fact that not only uh, have top officials uh, from Vodafone, including uh, uh, Mr. Analjit Singh, executive chairman of uh, Vodafone, meeting up with Montek Singh Aluwalia and coming out and uh, saying that it was a fruitful meeting, Montek Singh Aluwalia kind of assuring uh, Mr. Analjit Singh that uh, there would be no way that uh, honest taxpayers would be penalized in the country. More than that, there were senior officials uh, and, and they were quite senior in the hierarchy from, uh, from the global uh, brand, so as to say, meeting up with the Prime Minister Minister's office or with the prime officials in, 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 in the Prime Minister's office, as well as people who are now running uh, the Finance Ministry, that is uh, the two key aides of Prime Minister Mr. C. Rangarajan as well as Mr. Montek Singh Aluwalia. Having said that, what we understand from speaking to our sources is uh, that uh, there might not be a clear-cut uh, a waiver given to uh, Vodafone at this stage since the case technically uh, or, or a demand on Vodafone has been raised and, and it, 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 it has to be raised in, in due course of time, but the case is not closed. It's an open case. Therefore, uh, since the parliament has already uh, passed the finance bill 2000, 12-13, uh, making uh, thereby uh, the, 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 the law which enables the government to retrospectively challenge such type of tax cases, it might not be possible for the government to completely waive off uh, the tax, uh, uh, tax liability of Vodafone, but what the government is expecting is that they can perhaps waive off uh, the penalty clause, thereby saving at least 
a penalty as well as the interest cost, thereby saving Vodafone from paying almost double the amount uh, of, of tax that has been raised on them. The government also knows and perhaps Vodafone also knows that uh, there would be tribunals, there would be courts to challenge uh, the tax, uh, tax demand that has been raised on Vodafone and perhaps it would be a long drawn legal route through which Vodafone might need to get uh, or, or go through before the case is settled. All right, Kumar, thanks for getting us those two stories. But uh, let me now get in a legal voice in here. Uh, Hitesh Jain joining us as well. Hitesh, my first question to you. Clearly, there seems to be now a feeling within the government that we need to put this case, which has uh, got a lot of, uh, you know, uh, disconcertion among, among uh, you know, foreign investors. It's been a very, uh, it's hit the government rather hard on its face. There seems to be an attempt to try and put this behind now, what we learn is that perhaps it may not be easy for the government to just go back and say, okay, we are letting this case go, we are not going to raise a fresh demand on tax, simply because there could be a political fallout of that. Mind you, Parliament has approved of this. There could tomorrow some, be somebody who says, you know, you had the authority, you had the regulatory and the legal jurisdiction to raise this 10,000 crores, but you didn't. What, according to you, legally could be the way out for the government to reduce the blow as less as possible on Vodafone and move ahead with this case? Uh, I had always maintained uh, after the Supreme Court judgment and after the budget announcement that in this tug of war, uh, it is always desirable to walk down the middle path. And this is precisely the middle path it seems both the parties are looking at. For example, of the 20,000 odd uh, tax, uh, uh, 20,000 crore uh, uh, tax demand, 7,900 is actual tax and the balance is towards the penalty and interest. So in Settlement Commission, perhaps you may see a, a formula that can be worked out that the basic tax will be accepted by the uh, Vodafone and, uh, may, and, the, uh, and, the, in, and opt for a waiver in terms of penalty and interest or with a nominal penalty. So this seems to be an approach. Basically, Settlement Commissions are, uh, uh, have been constituted so that basic tax can be recovered. And if a party is ready, willing to pay the basic tax amount, then it can be afforded the immunity, uh, I mean, in terms of penalty and interest. Uh, that is certainly the power the Settlement Commission does. It does rest into it to uh, reduce that amount. So all in all, uh, what you can, one, one can see that 7,009 crore odd is the tax amount and the balance uh, uh, being towards the interest and pen, uh, penalty. So this may be a, a formula that might be worked out between the parties. Mm. But you do believe, legally speaking, that to wave off even the 7,900 crore would be very difficult for this government, if not impossible? Well, I don't think so. It will be possible for government to waive off this 7,900 and particularly when the parliament has passed the legislation allowing the retrospective amendment. So basically, uh, uh, I mean, uh, whatever the reductions you will see will be in terms of the penalty and interest that has been demand demanded by the income tax department. And finally, Hitesh, there is this other uh, aspect to this entire case where in Calcutta High Court, there is a, a somewhat similar kind of a case on retrospective uh, amendment being uh, looked into and then of course uh, the government has asked uh, the, uh, the, uh, the additional uh, solicitor general who had put in his papers to stay back and actually represent the government in that case. Do you think that that could be another kind of a way out for this government to say let's wait and see which way and which direction this particular matter goes? Well, that case I don't think will uh, stay the proceeding, uh, proceedings in the Vodafone case because in that case there has been no, no, no stay has been obtained, that matter is pending, it's a long drawn out matter, it will be heard in the High Court, then the Supreme Court is there. So by the time we hear the final word, much water will be flown down the river and once the Income Tax Department starts its proceedings and uh, pronounce its orders and all, then for example for Vodafone to challenge it, it will have to uh, uh, deposit the amount and all. So considering the fact that this is a long drawn out battle, it can involve into, uh, it can uh, take a lot of time. And it's, I think so, I mean, uh, it will be appropriate, uh, uh, I mean, for the parties to walk through the Settlement Commission route and uh, come out for a certain formula. Because waiting for Cal Calcutta High Court to pronounce the judgment is not really going to be the solution or even Vodafone would be waiting to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, go down that path. All right, Hitesh, uh, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your perspective with us. Well, clearly a middle ground there being looked at by the government. This is exactly what we are picking up as well from our sources. Take the matter to the Settlement Commission, which is more like a consent kind of a proceeding forum where there is no admission of guilt. It could be just a matter of saying, okay, fine, this is the tax that you had to pay. There would be no penalty. That's really the back, uh, back end channel work that is really on 
to put this issue behind the government. Let's take a quick break here on Big Story. But when we come back, the power tussle continues, this time between the state commissions and the electricity tribunal. More when we return. You're watching The Big Story. Now let's get you the next story. This one's from the power space. Now Bloomberg UTV learns that despite being given directions to revise tariffs before April, quite a few states have failed to do so, which could mean more tariff hikes on the anvil now that the tribunal would question these state commissions as to why they haven't acted. Priyal has those details. Priyal, tell us, uh, there was this very detailed order from the tribunal way back in November of 2011, which actually detailed the fact that there have to be tariff hikes. What's really happening on that front? Well, that's correct. You know, this particular petition, which is a very critical petition uh, as far as the power sector is concerned, was started once the power ministry wrote to the tribunal, that is the appellate uh, tribunal for, for electricity, asking uh, that, that considering that the state, state commissions and some of them have not increased their tariff as, uh, uh, as in, uh, since even uh, nine years or ten years back, therefore, uh, whether or not uh, that state commissions on their own can increase uh, the tariffs. And what we, uh, what the petition really after the hearing that uh, continued since early last year and November really stated the order of the tribunal was that Sumoto state commissions can increase tariff. They do not have to wait for the distribution companies uh, to come before the commissions and ask for the tariff hike. Uh, they also said very categorically uh, that they have to determine tariff and uh, within every year uh, possible and more importantly that they have to determine tariff for a particular financial year before April, which meant that most of the state commissions, that is 29 state commissions, needed to uh, give the tariff details by about uh, April uh, 2012, which has not happened in many cases. Now, if you look at it, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, Haryana, Karnataka, Punjab, may have been falling in line with the order, but as far as UP, Kerala and Jharkhand are concerned, there has been no revision so far. In Rajasthan, is, uh, uh, we understand that, that the revision is on the anvil, whereas if you look at Gujarat and Punjab, they revised only in May and June, which is much after the April deadline. DERC, as we know, is the latest one that increased the tariff uh, as of uh, this month itself. So this is as far as the current state is concerned, where a lot of state commissions have not really complied with those orders of the appellate tribunal, which really directed them to increase tariff before April onwards and not to wait for distribution companies to come before them, but to do it sumoto. So are we saying that the latest of the tariff hikes by the DERC were also actually much later than they were supposed to be? Well, that's correct. And what we understand that there's also a series of litigation that has probably sort of led to that very uh, increase in the tariff as, as well. Now, BCES Rajthani, which is one of the uh, distribution companies, had filed before the appellate tribunal against uh, DERC, stating that they have not followed the orders of the appellate tribunal, which asked them to increase the tariff. Thereafter, the appellate tribunal asked for an affidavit uh, by the DRC as to why it has not followed the orders of the tribunal to increase the tariff before April. We have the exclusive copies of the affidavit that DRC has submitted as of last week and what they have said and really uh, said that while they, uh, uh, while they uh, completely honor the judgment of the order, but because there have been past orders that are, uh, that are placed before the Supreme Court, they did not deem it fit to increase the tariff as it would create inconvenience uh, to the public if at all the Supreme Court thought in other direction. Now, interestingly, despite that very negotiations that have or, or the affidavit submissions that have happened, uh, DRC increased the tariff again, as of, la as of uh, la within last 10 days. But 4th July is when this particular matter again comes up before appellate tribunal and we'll get more clearer details as to what really stands as far as state commission's delays are concerned. 
All right, Priyal. Well, that is what is going on as far as the power sector is concerned, a crucial piece of reforms uh, in hiking tariffs, which haven't been hiked for many, many years, and uh, the tariffs are still way below the cost that is being incurred. Well, let's take a quick break, but coming up, the RBI raises a red flag on the risk posed by algorithmic trading. More when we return. You're watching The Big Story. Well, over the past few months, we've been highlighting here on Bloomberg UTV the phenomenal rise of algorithmic trading in our stock markets. Now, while the SEBI did react in the past to our stories, finally, the RBI last week has admitted in its financial stability report and given some stunning numbers there that one-fifth of NSE's volumes now actually come from algorithmic trades. Mind you, there was this whole view among stock exchanges that while some of these players have notched up very high volumes, in the overall context, it's not still a threat. Well, the numbers that have been put out by RBI really kind of belie that kind of a assumption that we are still not going the way as developed markets have gone. And of course, the risks that come with it. What is RBI saying? Very significantly, it says some recent episodes in Indian markets have highlighted the need for a carefully calibrated approach towards technological advancements like direct market access supporting algorithmic and high frequency trading. Now, this is what the RBI has said last week. We have, over the past few months, highlighted significantly some of the biggest traders in this market in our stock markets as far as both cash and derivatives are concerned on both the stock exchanges. Now just take a look at this. These are some of the volumes for a very limited period of time, huge volumes. These are players which are just pure play, technology players. They have absolutely uh, no retail presence. These are just plain vanilla algorithmic players that we've been highlighting to you. On March 30th, after a series of our such similar such stories, SEBI did come out with a set of guidelines it said that exchanges shall put in place effective economic disincentives with regard to high daily order to trade ratio of algo orders of the stock broker. And just today, with effect from today, this is what the Bombay Stock Exchange has done. It's levied charges for algo orders having high order trade ratio and members with ratio equal to or greater than 500 can't trade in the first 15 minutes of the next session. Now, clearly, at least there seems to be some realization within the stock market regulator and our stock exchanges that this is not something to be just wished away. As RBI has also clearly said that yes, while there is every need to move towards technology and allow such technology-oriented trading uh, products, however, this must be done in a calibrated way and the risk to the system must be balanced. Very importantly, RBI has also gone ahead and said that the volatility in our markets could be directly or indirectly linked to the significant rise in algorithmic trading. Well, that's a story we'll keep bringing to you because a threat to the stock market is clearly something nobody would want to see. RBI's important statements coming there last week. That's all that we have time for you in this edition of The Big Story. Thanks for watching.